Get all those blossoms. Spring has sprung here in Oregon. The sun's in my face even. And everything is starting to bloom. So we thought we'd take you around on a tour this week of some of the wild medicinal and edible plants that are growing in our yard. So let's go see what's blooming. So up here on the hill, we have some wild, well, we don't know what they're called, but we call them cherry plums. They're plums. They have a large pit inside, but they're about the size of a cherry. And the children enjoy these all summer long. It's like having a snack out in the yard whenever you want it. And for our children who were adopted from orphanages overseas, that is like the biggest treat they could ever get to have food all of the time whenever they want. Here we have blackberries growing wild. They're an invasive species here, almost a weed. We are putting them to use though. We use these in our Oregon Harvest to Berry tea. They actually get quite sweet when you brew them. If we look closer, you can see, here's the old ones from last year that are diseased and kind of dying. We don't use those in our tea, but up and coming are these newbies here sprouting out give them a few more weeks and they'll be big enough for tea this video this week is we were cutting blackberry leaves for our tea <clears throat> and noticed along the way all the wonderful things that are blooming around here and sprouting and growing as spring shows up. When we first moved here we didn't realize that all these things were so beneficial we just thought they were weeds. And then as we learned more about herbs and we bought them already dried and prepared, we realized that those very things were growing right out in our yard. Over time, we found as we needed new herbs for different ailments and diseases that came up, those very things were growing right out in the yard just as we needed them, such as the mole and root when we had coughs, and plantain for cuts and wounds, and horsetail for back aches and bone issues. It's pretty amazing what God sticks right out in your backyard that looks like nothing. Come here, Bub Bub. Come here, kitty, 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 kitty. Oh, the cat doesn't want to come say hi. We'll have to show you him. Here's Bub. Hi, Bub. Come here, buddy. Come here, kitty, kitty. Come here, Bub. Come here, kitty. Are you enjoying spring? Huh? Over here is some mullein leaf. It's also known as cowboy toilet paper because it's really soft and fuzzy. So if you're out in the wild and don't have toilet paper, that might be good to know. Um, it will kind of make the skin red though. So can be made into a tea, dehydrated. We used a lot of this when we had coughs and it seemed to help those progress a little bit quicker. Mullen is known as an expectorant, an anti-inflammatory. Down here we have another mullen plant. These will keep sprouting leaves and go upward and then they turn into a big long stalk. 
and that stock is what gives them their common name Aaron's Rod from a biblical story of Aaron and his rod. They shoot up and then they flower at the top with a yellow flower, lighting the flower part on fire and using them as a torch as they burn down. They get pretty stiff and firm as they dry out in the summertime. Down here we have what's known as dead nettle. And it's called dead nettle because it doesn't sting. It can be used in salads or in teas. We're going to climb back through here. It's kind of wild and crazy as we get it cleaned up. But that makes for some good fort areas for the children. Over here, we have some Oregon grape. Most people are probably familiar with the root part of this plant. It has many medicinal qualities. It's good in tea. You can capsulize it, you can dry it. Uh, real similar to like a chicory root. And then the berries are also good. Typically, people will use Oregon grape when they have colds and flus to help assist the immune system. It's a good immunomodulant. That just means that it assists the immune system in its function, normal functioning, so that your body's immune system can help take care of the issues you're dealing with. Uh, I believe it's also a lymphatic herb assisting the lymph system with the detoxification, which also helps the immune system. I was just going to walk and show you where I've been harvesting blackberry leaves and I spied this. This is all over Oregon, at least the western part, and it just hangs out everywhere. I'll grab some here, it's up kind of high. But so it kind of looks like moss, right? So this is called a lichen. We liken it a lot. Ha ha ha. So it's also called, it's common name, um, old man's beard. And it can be made into a tea. It can also be dried and capsulized, used as a powder. You can make a tincture out of it. It's an antifungal, so it's good for assisting in any fungus related issues which is pretty interesting that this grows all over here because in Oregon there's lots of mold and fungus issues, whether it be a plant or a person, because this is really wet and mold and moss and things just grow really well. So it's pretty amazing that God would send this to a place that is so prone to mold and fungus. So God is good in all of his ways. So back up to the blackberries. So this can be a bit of a precarious way to farm your blackberry leaf. Um, we would call this foraging blackberry leaf, wild harvested blackberry leaf, because it's not maintained at the moment in any sort of an order. And we harvest it as we need it. So we're making use of what we have on our property, turning a problem into a solution, like some wonderful blackberry tea. Oh, you're crooked. Hey, there you are. I'm going to see if this gorilla pod can hang around. In the pokies. We're picking blackberries in the pokies. They are really, really, really pokey. There you are. It's kind of tough getting a gorilla pod to hook onto the blackberry vine. Just visiting the chickens. They think I'm gonna have a treat for them. Which is understandable. Look at how they have torn it up in here. Go chickens!
What you doing, farmer? I'm standing in a closet space under the stairs. <laughs> Theoretically, there's stairs here. Mm -hmm. This is a closet, and I'm standing in. We will put shelves in here. I'm up shelving along here. Some bins underneath the low part of the what? stairs. We're supposed to sit on a porch. Where we can store our food. A pantry. A cellar. A cellar. Root cellar. Somewhat of a root cellar. Dad, what are you going to store in that secret compartment? Vanilla. <laughs> Which secret compartment? I'm not telling. <laughs> sure. Hide the vanilla from me. No more Willamette Berry Pie for you. The farmer's over there putting the staircase up in the garage. It'll go up to the tea studio. And underneath, we are going to put a root cellar slash pantry slash closet. How are you doing? Are you getting some sunshine? So thanks for joining us down on the farm this week and our little tour of our wild herbs and plants and our animals trying to eat my sleeve. We will see you next week. <laughs>